In this video, we're going to look at how to take a set of MIPS assembly code and back out the functionality of it, so basically trying to translate it into a C equivalent type of code and then being able to describe the operation or the function that it performs. This example here is going to look at a version of MIPS where we assume there is no branch delay slot. This is a variation of MIPS that is often used in architecture and computer organization textbook. So to get started, we have our MIPS assembly instructions here on the left. And the first thing that we're going to do is to kind of go through the instructions piece by piece to see what they're generally doing. And then after we've done that, we're going to try to back out a slightly higher level implementation of the functionality. So to start off here, we have a label of foo, and while you might not know for sure, this kind of suggests that this might be a function if this is an isolation from everything else. So I'm going to say for the moment that we might have a function called foo here, and it might have some arguments coming in. We'll find that out as we go through the rest of this. If we look at the first instruction, it's basically assigning the value of 0 to the register v0 and the register v0 in MIPS is used to hold the return value. So we could say that this first line is essentially saying that we're making some integer, which I'm going to call retval for return value, equal to 0. In the next line, it's setting some temporary value t0 to also be 0. So I'm going to somewhat randomly say that we're going to have a variable that I'm just going to call m that is going to be 0. The next line is saying that we want to set t1 to 1 if t0 is less than a1. So basically this is saying that t1 is going to equal, and t0 we already said was m, is going to equal if m is less than a1, and a1 is an argument to the function, and since the argument started 0, this is kind of the second argument, but I'm going to label this argument 1, and so I'm going to say this is basically setting t1 based off of if m is less than argument 1. And from this we can also say that we have some inputs or input arguments to this function. So we have an argument 1, so that suggests there might be an argument 0 coming along. So I'm going to fill in this, and maybe it would require, may require some modification, but this is a starting point. In the next line we have a branch unequal, and this is saying that we're going to branch if t1 is equal to 0, then we're going to go to the label L3. And so the set on less than and branch are kind of working together to determine on whether we should branch or not. And so t1 is set based off of the value of m and the argument 1. And so if m is less than argument 1, then that means t1 will be 1, and so it won't be equal to 0. So basically, if m is greater than or equal to argument 1, then we would jump out of the loop. So we could say that this as a whole is really is saying that if m is greater than or equal to the argument 1, then we're going to go to location L3, which is going to leave the loop. And we might refine this a little bit further later on, but this will get us at least started. The next instruction is a logical left shift, and it's shifting over the value t0, which is essentially m two places. And this is equivalent to multiplying it by 4. So we can say for this next instruction, it's saying that t1 is equal to 4 times the value of m. The next instruction, the add, is adding this value of t1 that we just had to the 0th argument and putting it into t1. So it's saying that t1 is going to equal argument 0 plus t1, which is equal to argument 0 plus the 4 times m that we had from the previous instruction. Now the next instruction is a load word, and this is loading the value from the address at t1 and putting it into a register t2. So it's saying that t2 is going to equal what is ever at memory address t1. And if we look at t1, it's a combination of argument 0 plus an offset of 4 times m. And if we assume that argument 0 might be pointing to an array, then we could say really it's accessing the array at the index m, assuming the array is a value or is an array of integers or 4 byte values. So we could say that this is really equivalent to saying I'm going to access the array address by argument 0 at address m. So that takes care of the load word. Now for the branch on not equal, it's saying that if 
t2, this value we just loaded, does not equal the second argument, which is really the third argument overall, then we're going to branch to some location. So this is saying that if t2 doesn't equal something, we're going to skip over the next instruction. So alternatively, I could say if t2 does equal argument 2, then we're going to perform this one add instruction. So I'm going to add so I don't forget this argument 2 up top. And then if we're not branching, we're going to do this one add of v0 plus 1. And v0 we already said was a return value. So we're saying in this if statement, if this happens, then we're going to take ret value, which is the destination, and we're going to make it the current return value and add 1 to it. So that takes care of the add. And that's essentially what is inside the if statement, because it, the branch on not equal goes to L2, which is outside of this if statement. And so in at L2, we're adding 1 to the value in T0 and putting it in T0, and T0 is our value for m. So essentially, this is saying m is going to equal m plus 1. And then the next instruction is a jump back to L1. So we could write this abstractly saying we're going to go to L1 here. And then for the last instruction, it's a jump register to the return address. So this is leaving from a function. And so we could say that this is essentially going to return. And since we have a value in our v0, we're going to be returning this value. So we're going to return with the ret value as the return value from this. And so this kind of gives a higher level idea of what's going on here, but we'd still like to simplify this a little bit more. So there's a couple of things that we can pull out. One piece is that if we were to look at these instructions here, we see that the first two is essentially getting a value from memory or from an array into the value t2 to then compare to some argument value. And so I could really replace t2 with just the access to the array. So I could really replace these three lines with something like if the array address by argument 0 at index m is equal to argument 2, then we're going to do the increment of the return value. And otherwise, we'll skip over that. And then we can also see that we've got some go-tos in here that we'd like to replace with something that's more of a typical C style syntax. And so if we look at a few places, we can see that in the beginning, we're jumping outside of this block of code that we're mainly executing if a particular condition isn't met. And then within this block of code, we're jumping back to the beginning of this block uh, all of the time. So you could write this either as a while loop or a for loop, but through a couple of things, if we were to look at these lines here plus these lines here, we could rewrite this something to the effect that uh, with a for loop where we're saying we're going to start off by initializing m equal to 0. And then if m is greater than or equal to our first argument, then we're going to jump out of this. So alternatively, if m is less than this argument, we're going to stay within the loop. So I can say if m is less than argument 1, we're going to continue within this loop. And then at the end, we increment the value of m. And so we could replace essentially all of this with a for loop. And then with all this as a whole, we could take this and rewrite this and say, well, we're going to have some function foo. And we found that it's going to return integer value. It has three arguments. The first one we found was an address of an array. So we could write this like this, and I'm just giving it a random name A. The second argument, arg1, is what's limiting how many times we're going through the loop. And so this is likely due to the size of the array. So I can call this in size because it is the number of times we want to execute the loop or how many values might be in the array. And then finally, the last argument is the one that we're using to see whether or not we want to increment the return value. And so I'm going to call this argument value because it's maybe the value that we're comparing to to see whether how many times it exists in the array. And so this is the header for our function. And then the first thing that we saw is that we were initializing our return value to 0. And then the next element was that we were having our for loop. And so we could basically say that we're going to have our for loop. And it's going to initialize m equal to 0. 
the loop is going to continue so long as m is less than the size argument, and each time through this loop, we're going to increment m by 1. Within the loop, the only thing that's going on is we have our if statement, so if the value in a at index m is equal to the value argument, then we're going to increment the return value, and that's the only thing that's happening within this loop other than continuing the loop, and so this ends the for loop, and then at the ends, we are simply just returning the value, so we, at the end of our function, we're returning the retval, and this finishes off our function, because after this, we've jumped to the register that holds our return address. And so if we were to look at this C code, we could say that at an even higher level, that basically this function is returning, or returns the count of the number of times, or the number of entries, that contain the value specified by the argument val. And so this is how we can analyze a block of MIPS code and figure out at a higher level what functionality it is performing.